welcome back to Hannity. So after last week's deadly terrorist attack in San Bernardino, Americans all across the country are on edge. Now, over the weekend, 2016, Republican frontrunner Donald Trump took a very strong stance against radical Islam and explained what he would do if he was elected our next president. Take a look. Should there be profiling? Well, I think there can be profiling. I mean, how, how would that work? If they thought there was something wrong with that group and they saw what was happening and they didn't want to call the police because they didn't want to be profiling, I think that's pretty bad. You have people that have to be tracked. If they're Muslims, they're Muslims. But you have people that have to be tracked. We have one person that I really know of, and it's called President Obama. Until he admits that this is a problem, we're never going to solve the problem. But he's only going to be there, fortunately, a little bit more than a year. Because the problem will get solved when he gets the hell out. I would certainly go after the wives who absolutely knew what was happening. And I guess your definition of what I do, I'm going to leave that to your imagination. But I will tell you, I would be very tough on families. And that's not all. Earlier tonight, Trump said we need to completely put a stop to Muslims entering our country until we as a nation figure out what's going on. Joining us with reaction, ex-Muslims of North America, President Mohammed Syed, from the Islamic House of Wisdom, Imam Muhammad Ali Alahi, and from Act for America, Brigitte Gabriel is with us. Uh, let me ask you, Mr. Alahi, this question. Donald Trump in his press release saying that we need a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the country. Is it or is it not true that there's a clash of cultures? Meaning that if you grow up under Sharia, where women can't drive, women must dress a certain way, uh, women are treated like second-class citizens, how do you ascertain if that person wants to come here and change their life, or if they want to bring those values with them, which are incompatible with our own Constitution? Well, my answer is, if you are looking for entertainment and joke, listen to Mr. Tom, Trump. And his uh, talks. Hey, hey, mom, don't, well, mom, excuse me. Don't don't be so insulting to people <laughs> no, that disagree with you. Well, we, wait, wait, well, well, sir. Islamophobia wait, 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 wait. is an insult. Fourteen Islamophobia. Americans. Islamophobia. Fourteen Americans, Trump. sir, were killed by radicalized Muslims. So that's if not you, a joke. And him saying that we need to figure out who these people are that we're letting into our country. That's to protect Americans, sir. If we are, I don't if think we that's are very serious, funny. if you are serious about in our fight against terrorism. Sean, I am sure that we will win this war with the power of unity, power of freedom, power of equality in the eyes of laws, as the president said, the laws of the Lord, the laws you didn't of the address land. One part and of my Islamophobia question. My is question the best is, news. My That's question the happiest is, news for the ISIS. Okay. If you want to make ISIS happy, then go ahead with Islamophobia. Uh, okay. And then There's ask no for the Muslim community my to question, apologize. I, I, I will move on because you don't want to answer my question. Mohammed Sayed, let me ask you this question. I talked about the incompatibility, somebody who grows up under Sharia in some of these strict Islamist countries, how do you ascertain if they want to Americanize, modernize, abide by American constitutional values and assimilate, or if they want to bring their values here and indoctrinate Americans? Because Trump also cited 25% of those polled, Center for Security Policy, recent data, that violence against Americans here in the U.S. is justified as part of global jihad. How do we know who believes that and who doesn't? I don't think there's an easy way to distinguish between that, but the problem is that the people that will stop this problem are also among the same population. I grew up in Pakistan. I'm now an ex-Muslim, I'm an atheist, and I'm fighting for secular values, for American values. And by presuming that all Muslims believe in the same thing and hold the same ideas, you're preventing progress from happening. Nobody's saying that. But you're, you, you're, uh, let me throw it to Brigitte, see if she gets it. I am saying if you grow up under Sharia, Brigitte, and women can't dress the way they want, and they can't drive a car, and they can't be seen in public without a male relative, like in Saudi Arabia. Are you coming Who, who's here? Who's talking about Sharia? Excuse Allah, me, I'm not talking, talking to you. Allah. I'm talking to Brigitte. Brigitte, that to me is a clash of cultures. And I'm saying that unless we can ascertain what the motivation is of people that grow up under that culture, there becomes a great difficulty in whether or not we're willing to gamble with the lives of Americans by letting in people who potentially could be radicalized. 
Well, we have a great concern in this country right now because radicalized people are killing innocent civilians right now, shooting them at their workstations, uh, shooting them at malls, and we have to be very careful to protect our nation. And those who are raised in, in, in strict Islamic societies, radical Islamic societies, who are taught to hate the infidels and the disbelievers, uh, that we are that Islam is superior to all other religions. This is not compatible with the Constitution, and it's not compatible with our values, where we in the Judeo-Christian culture are taught to love, to forgive, to uh, uh, do unto others what you want others unto you. So we are facing a clash of civilization, and we have to open our eyes and ears and identify those radicalized people coming into our society. All right, let me ask Mr. Elahi yeah. one more question, because Donald Trump also in his press release cited the poll that said 51 percent of those polled agreed that Muslims in America should have the choice of being governed either by the Constitution, our rule of law, or Sharia. Do you agree well, that Muslims should have the choice in America? I would say the Muslim community in America is one of the most honorable and educated and contributed community to the society. I'm asking and you is a question. Insulting, is insulting to, to question the, the intention and the action of Muslim community really? who are contributing to this country day and night. And Sean, we don't have I'm such a thing as radical Islam. For example, who, is, who is talking about radical Islam? A, if we are a, fighting against Lahi, terrorism, Mr. let us Lahi, go with the let me causes educate and sources you because of terrorism. Clearly, you, clearly you didn't see what what happened and our, I our, see, our I let me watch. finish our chairman of a homeland security committee uh, today said that ISIS has plans to infiltrate the refugee community so we saw what happened in Paris where ISIS infiltrated the refugee community explain to every American why we should gamble with their lives if we can't ascertain if a person is a true and honest refugee or if they've aligned themselves with a terror group why should well, we I, let I anybody in if we can't ascertain that I would explain, I'm saying that we are wasting our time dealing with the effects, not the causes. If you are really serious about that, we have to deal with the Saudi government and those who are supporting the terrorism and supporting Al-Qaeda and supporting ISIS. Why when should we deal you know, with one single said question. Last night, you Why know, should America take in Syrian refugees when our head of Homeland Security in the House is warning us? as is our national director of intelligence and our FBI director, they're warning us that ISIS will infiltrate and we cannot vet them. Why the should Syrian, Americans take that risk? Answer that well, question. We don't have to, and the Syrians do not want to come to this country, just stop war over there, but not the way that the president was talking last night. He said we have to stop ISIS and terrorism in Iraq and Syria through our friends and allies. And I'm saying, sorry, Mr. President, if Saudi Arabia and Turkey are our allies in fighting against terrorism, we are already failed. Even the Israelis right. cannot Rajiv, be we'll our allies the because they are providing um, medical Sean. assistance for, we, for the ISIS. We should not not let any refugees into the country, not when we have killers already embedded in these refugees who are telling us exactly what they want to do, and that is they want to come here and they want to kill us. People ask me all the time, who should we believe? I say, believe those who say they want to kill you because they usually follow through. And I encourage people to go to our website. We just launched a campaign called Open Eyes Save Lives. Go to actforamerica.org and learn what are the signs that you need to be aware of in your community so you can start protecting your community. Thank you all for being with us. Appreciate your time.